In this video, we're going to talk about the fulminate ion or uh, CNO minus, and we're going to talk about drawing the lower structure as well as well as well as assigning formal charges and how do we come up with the best possible structure, right? So again, I have one carbon, I have a nitrogen, I have an oxygen. I have a negative charge, that means I had one electron to my total electron count, right? So carbon has four valence electrons, nitrogen has five valence electrons, and oxygen has six valence electrons, right? So this is nine, right? So four plus five is nine, uh, four plus five is nine, plus six, that will give me 15, plus my additional electron, that's from the negative charge. So um, I have a total of 16 electrons to place, right? So if I go ahead and write out my uh, my base structure, right? I just write out uh, my carbon, my nitrogen, my oxygen, right? I eventually formed the bond between them because I wanted to to let, I wanted to make the nitrogen satisfy the octet rule, right? It's one of those um, atoms that in, in, in most cases satisfy the octet rule. So again, we have two, four, six, eight. Again, nitrogen is happy. And we've used eight electrons out of the 16 total that we have to place, right? Now let's satisfy oxygen's octet rule. It has four, so we're missing four more. And this will give oxygen its octet, right? What about carbon? Right? What about carbon? Does carbon satisfy the octet rule? Well, in this case, we have charges, so it may or may not. But again, we have 16 electrons to place. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So we still have four more electrons to place. Again, oxygen is octet is satisfied. Nitrogen is octet is satisfied. So the only place we can place these four electrons must be on the carbon atom. Right? So let's assign our formal charges. Right, we know the overall charge of the ion is, is negative one. But what about nitrogen? Well, I have one, two, three, four. So I, I take the number of valence electrons of nitrogen minus the total nitrogen the total number of electrons I have around nitrogen, which is four, right? So it's only four electrons. One, two, three, four. That's contribute to the nitrogen. So it's five minus four. And so my nitrogen um, should get a plus one negative charge. What about the oxygen? Right? I take six, which is oxygen's valence electrons, minus one, two, three, four, five, six, right? We count in only electrons that's contributing to the oxygen. And so in this case, that is six minus six. So oxygen's formal charge would be zero in this case, right? With carbon, again, I'm gonna take the number of valence electrons of carbon, which is four, minus the total number of electrons from or within the formula, right? That's that's related to carbon. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Because remember, we're only counting the carbon's portion. We're not counting the nitrogen's portion, right? So that becomes four minus six, which will actually give me, right? So four minus six will actually give me a minus two. Again, minus two plus one is equal to negative one. So uh, that's the first structure, right? So if we get to the first structure, you could immediately notice that we should be able to form another structure. Right, and I could simply just take the electrons from here and form. Right, I could take the electrons. I'm sorry. Let, let's say it again. I could take the electrons from here and form a triple bond, and simultaneously move these electrons over here. Right. So in that case, this becomes a carbon with a triple bond to a nitrogen. Right. So all I did was. I formed a triple bond, right? And then I move these electrons over here, right? So in that case, I still have my two electrons right there. My nitrogen now has a triple bond, but this bond is now moved in the pair of two electrons on the oxygen. So this becomes O, right? So this is my oxygen. And now I have three pairs of electrons on my oxygen. Right, you will quickly see that the formal charge is still negative one, but let's count out the individual formal charges. Right, so again, carbon has four valence electrons, so this is one, two, three, four, five. So that is four minus five, which will give me a negative one of carbon. In this case, nitrogen has five valence electrons, so let's count the total number of electrons around nitrogen, right, only including a portion that is contributing to the nitrogen. So this is one, two, three, four. So 5 minus 4 
should give me a plus one um, from a charge. Well, oxygen has six valence electrons, so I'm going to take the total number. Of, uh, total, I'm going to take the number of valence electrons of oxygen minus the total number of, uh, of electrons around oxygen. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we have one that's only contributing to the oxygen, which would be seven. So that will be six minus seven, which would be negative one. We have also have one more structure, and I'm going to draw it down here. Right, we have one more structure that we can draw and we have one more structure that we could draw and how do we right so we have one more structure that we could draw and then how we do, how do we do it right so i'm going to draw my parentheses i'm going to have my carbon i'm going to have my nitrogen i'm going to have my oxygen right so i can actually form a triple bond between the nitrogen and the oxygen Right, so if I form a triple bond between nitrogen and oxygen, I still have one lone pair. Uh, not a lone pair, right? But yeah, I still have one lone pair on the oxygen, right? I still have my negative charge, and then my my carbon gains those electrons, right? So the only thing I did was move one pair in the form of a double bond and then move the other pair in the form of a double bond. Simultaneously, I'm going to move this pair in the form of lone pairs and then this pair in the form of lone pairs around the carbon atom, right? So that will give me two and two, which you see right here, two and two, and I still have the remaining um, two pairs of electrons right there, right? So in this case, what would be a formal charge of the atoms you see in this formula? Right. Let's start with carbon first. So this is carbon's valence electrons is four, and let's count the total number of valence electrons we have around carbon right now. So this would be one, two, or total number of electrons. Right. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only the contributing portions of uh, of, of 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 carbon. Right. So this would be four minus seven, which would give us a negative three formal charge. Right. With nitrogen, again, it has a valence electron of five uh, of five. And then the, the number of electrons around it individually, including only the nitrogen, would be one, two, three, four. Right? So that would be five minus four, and that would be plus one. With the oxygen, similarly, again, oxygen valence electrons is six. So this would be one, two, three, four, five. So there'd be six minus five, which would be plus one. Again, the overall charge is still negative one. Right? So these are plausible structures for the ion. And so then the professor might ask you, well, okay, well, which one is the most stable ion? Now, remember I said the ion that contributes most to the formal charge, or uh, contributes most to the molecular buildup or the hybrid uh, or the hybrid of the molecule is the one that the charges are closest to zero, right? So this, right, this compound right here would be the most stable compound. Right, because again, all our charges are closest to zero. Here I have a negative two, here I have a negative three, which is really bad. Right, so this would be the compound that's most plausible or would contribute the most to the resonance of the molecule.